and what God's intention is for us, why we are invited into this sort of kingdom living. And so when Greg said, let's do a movie series in August, I, I got the perfect movie. Um, but as a recent seminary grad, I'm always going to be worried that I'm going to the scripture first and then using <laughs> my illustration. And I was so excited because when I went and looked at what the scripture was for this Sunday, I thought, perfect, the Lion King really actually can work for this. <laughs> so I'm excited to share that with you. But before we, we jump into that, I want us to start with our scripture this morning. It's from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by great, the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For in as in one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same functions. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and we individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion of, to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of our Lord. Please pray. God, we come to you this morning to be comforted, to be encouraged. And Lord, perhaps some of us even to be reminded of who we are in you, Lord. God, I pray that you would hide me behind the cross of Christ that your words would come through this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I love that Tom started with kind of the summary of the Lion King. Um, I realized this morning that, that maybe there are some who missed this incredible movie. Um, I believe it came out in the 90s, so maybe reaching back a little bit. But I think I know that some of the kids are with me on this because I already cleared it with them at this movie. So if you haven't seen The Lion King, it's an epic Disney movie. Uh, it starts with probably one of the grandest opening scenes. Um, it, it is creative, it is musically incredible. They won all kinds of Emmys. I think, I think it won Emmys and it also won Grammys because it was just this huge movie. And so it starts with this little baby Simba and he's essentially being shown to the gathering of animals, the entire circle of life. The movie starts with this macro ant scene of ants walking across the log, and then it goes into the elephants and the hippos and the giraffes. And Simba is shown as his character over all of, he is eventually gonna have the long authority. And then the movie moves into Simba's childhood, and he starts to have this recognition that all of this land, all of these animals are under his domain. And he gets a little, kind of a little too big for his own paws. And there's actually a great scene in the movie where he's, he's getting chewed out by his dad for being not the best little lion cub. And Simba's following behind his dad and he puts his little paw in, the, in his father's paw. And there's kind of this little moment of recognition for Simba that he's got a lot to learn and he has really far to go. And then tragedy strikes in Simba's life. And a really despicable character named Scar, he's an evil uncle, in a sense tricks Simba into a massive and catastrophic accident in which his father Mufasa is killed. And Scar, I mean, you think he's just the most deplorable character, and then he's the first one to meet Simba after it's realized that Mufasa's been killed. I think this is one of the first movies I actually cried in, <laughs> I remember crying in. Um, because it's so, he, he, the loss is so tremendous that Simba just recognizes that his actions, although orchestrated by his evil uncle, have had massive consequences. 
And, and Simba, in his devastation, meets Scar. And Scar tells him this lie that it's his fault. And that he should run away. Because Scar knows that not only the boss is gone, but also Simba's gone, that he takes over the kingdom, which is what he really wants. And it's this horrible scene. And, and because it's a Disney movie, it, it, it's heavy, but it doesn't last long. Simba runs away, which is not the best thing to do in a tough situation. But he runs away, and he encounters two great characters, um, Timon and Pumbaa. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen this movie, you'll be really So Timon and Pumbaa are, are living the lifestyle of Akuna Matata, which, as Tom already told us, was mistranslated, but they live in the mistranslation of the fun. And they essentially tell Simba, listen, life is not about worries, it's not about concerns, you eat some bugs, which is a great scene. And, um, and, and so Simba starts living this life with him. But you always know that there's just something that doesn't quite sit right with Simba. He knows that this is not who he is. He knows that there is, is more to him than this Akuna Matata lifestyle. So I know that was, I, I wrote on my sermon outline, brief introduction to the movie. And so, <laughs> that was a brief uh, so, so then what happens is, is someone from Simba's past shows up. There's another lioness, and it's his best childhood friend. And she's out hunting, and she's about to take out Pumbaa, who's a warthog, and Simba protects Pumbaa. And she is so excited that he's alive, because things have gone really bad in the rest of the kingdom. Scar's taken over, he's let the animals just run rampant. They've, they've really killed this horrible paradise. And she's like, you gotta come back. You can save us all. And Simba's like, mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. And all of a sudden, he's having to confront this past that he thought he could run from. And his friend calls him out, and she's pretty harsh. And then Simba goes into this moment of pouting. <laughs> it's actually, uh, really, uh, they nailed the, the human spirit in this movie about animals. But Simba's pouting. And one of the very first characters we're introduced to in this movie is this little monkey named Rafiki. He's actually my favorite character in the whole movie. And Rafiki discovers through Nala, the, the lioness who has figured out that Simba's alive, Rafiki figures out that Simba's alive. And Rafiki, in this movie, as you begin to watch it, um, there's, there's this huge Christian motif because you have the father, Mufasa, you have the son, and Simba, and I think Rafiki is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, I can back this up theologically. <laughs> so, so Rafiki... He's actually the one that baptizes Simba, in, a, in an essence, you can watch the movie, I'm not making this up. <laughs> he goes and he finds Simba in the midst of this great pity party. And Simba's feeling really sorry for himself, and woe is him, and this great life of Akuna Matata has been completely interrupted. And I'm not going to show you the whole scene of Rafiki, but essentially Rafiki just comes and starts annoying Simba. And he annoys him to the point of discomfort that Simba is ready to hear anything that Rafiki has to say because he wants to get rid of him, just like the scary God. So we're going to watch a clip from the movie. I will warn you, it is four minutes long. So kids, woohoo, we came to church on the right day. <laughs> um, but this is Rafiki, and he's finally interrupted Simba, and he now has Simba's attention. So let's watch. You know my father? Correction, I know your father. I hate to tell you this, but he died a long time ago. Nope! Wrong again! <laughs> He's alive! And I show him to you! You follow old Rafiki, he knows the way! Come on!
that's not my father. It's just my reflection. No. Look hard. You see? He lives in you. His reality. He is the son of the king, 
He is called to a greater role. And he's not functioning as part of the body. We're all gifted, and when one of us does not remember our place or recognize our value as a child of the king, we risk conforming to a world fraught with darkness, sadness, and separation from the one who loves us with a deep, deep love and grace. The amazing thing is that God knew there would be times when we would lose sight of who we are. And this is where God's spirit speaks to us. Sometimes it's gentle reminders. Sometimes it feels like we're getting cracked over the head with someone's stick, literally. Personally, I, I identify with Simba in this movie in a lot of ways. There have been moments in my life when it was so much easier and more fun to conform to the world. Times when it was easier to be bitter and angry and kind. Moments when I took the fun and easy road rather than being obedient to God. Not even from an intentional standpoint all the time. But the good news is God does not leave us in those moments. He doesn't let us suffer out in the jungle. He continues to love us and journey with us. For me, that was friends in my life that have spoken to me. And, and sometimes feeling that, that audible voice of God speaking to me, reminding me, there's more for you. There's better for you. Be kind to this person. Love this person anyway. God's mercy manifested in his spirit's work of inward renewal. That's verse 2 of our scripture. And it impels us toward obedience that the gospel demands. I asked um, Mia, there's two pictures I want to show you because I think, again, this movie is a really good preaching movie. This is Pride Rock. This is where Simba kind of comes from. And I'll tell you a secret, this is the end of the movie. After Simba has gone back, and there's a great fight scene with Scar, it's a little scary. And, um, spoiler alert, Simba wins. <laughs> but this is what Simba came upon when he first goes back. So this is Pride Rock where he was born. But, you know, next slide. This is what it has become. This is, this is what happens when we, as the people of God, Forget our place in the world. Forget to use the gifts and the talents that God has given us to love our neighbors, to love our families, to love one another. But God calls us to follow him and restores us when we absolutely need it most. See, Simba not taking his place as king and all the other animals in the kingdom as a result suffered. The land was filled with hunger and despair because Simba was not the rightful king, because the one that had been taught justice and mercy in the, in the kingdom, in the circle of life, wasn't there. And so a powerful enemy came in and destroyed and killed. We as the body of Christ have to remember our world, our role in the world. We are light bearers. We are a city on a hill. We can bring a word of love, of justice, and mercy. We can be the voice for the voiceless. The last section of our passage is our call today. It's humility and mutual service. I love this quote that I found this week. It says, Christians belong to one another in one body and have in common the same grace of God and faith will help to stifle exaggerated ideas about one's own status or ministry and recognition of the significant contribution made by each member of the body will prevent one from thinking too highly or too lowly of oneself. I love the way that Eugene Peterson translated this in, in verse 9 and 10. This is what he tells us. I think that this is our call this morning. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled in a flame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. 
may we be a people that love from the center of who we are. May we be people who are good friends, and may we be people who pray all the time. Pray with me. Lord God, we thank you that you are the rightful king, and that you desire this world to be filled with justice and mercy and love and kindness. God, help us to be your hands and feet and bring about all that you envision for this world, starting with us.